All right, we are here for the second half of the Premium Sports Cup. Four more races left in this championship. Hopefully not as much time is spent looking at instant replays because that's clearly been, that clearly took a lot of time out of the last episode was just replays, looking at things a second time. Uh, before we get going on race four, a quick look at the points as we cross over, I guess, the halfway point on the championship. Through three races... There's a very clear, there's a very clear hierarchy in the point standings. The points leader is currently Thrasher, with the lowest finish of P4, at 54 points. <clears throat> Below that, June Summers at 51, Eric Wojcicki at 47, Nico Mizoto at 42, Mika Harris and Brian Ice are tied at 40, Natsuki at 38. Sophia Meyer, 37. Scarborough, 35. Natasha Harris is tied with Terrence Blackpool at 32. Billy Stuber is at 31. Veronica Katsuragi is at 28. Paul Valentine and Shoji Hakurei are tied at 23. Stephanie Kaiser is at 21. And John Garrison and David Danvers are tied for last at 20 points. And then Gemini and Cam are no longer on... The scoring sheet because they are no longer in the championship because their cars have been totaled. So that is the point situation. Now let us head into the fourth race of the championship. Race four of the championship is go, and we head to Dragon Trail this time out. This, the focus point is Mika Harris with the absolute worst peel out I think I've ever seen. But you know, that does keep you mostly safe, never mind from the turn one kerfuffle, but she doesn't care, she's gonna be a part of that no matter what, apparently. June Summers just tail whips Paul Valentine off the track. But all that did was allow Paul to take a spot away from his team owner, Thrasher. So that was a weird interaction. A three wide for not last. Some very weird battling going on, I must say. out of control for the GT350, but ahead of two cars, looking for a third spot on Kaiser, who just smacks right into the back of Paul Valentine. Oh my lord. We also have big damage on Blackpool's car, and some damage on Ice's car. There's a lot of, a lot of damage to be had on this first lap. Sophia's got a bit. Don't really know who she may have run into the back of. And Scarborough is checking out. It was time for him to leave. He had seen everything. The battle sort of between Japanese cars. Danvers wants a piece of the action. He looks set to outdrag Veronica into turn one here, potentially. That's a really, really cloudy here. You would think there'd be rain coming, but that's just physically impossible. Apparently Mika picked up damage somewhere along the way. Not sure from what, but... She's not electing to fix it. She's too wide with her sister heading up towards the medium speed corner. It's more of a high speed, really. Natasha slides the car to avoid running into her sister. It's kind of surprising, I'm not gonna lie. Perhaps for once they're aware that this race is a little bit above their petty sibling rivalry. But this is actually like meaningful in some sort of way. Or perhaps, I don't know. Wishful thinking, maybe. Mika has the run of a lifetime on four cars here. She's gonna get two at the braking zone, Eric and Veronica. And a third one on the way in, potentially, if well, she's not going to get a better exit than Shoji, that NSX is all-wheel drive, and this GT350R has terrible exit corner and traction. Corner exit traction, there we go. 
I also have terrible English language traction or something. Gets a huge exit from the Death Chicane and gets the remaining two positions. Now she just has to go on a trek to catch up to Scarborough. As he's some maybe three seconds up the road already. An all-out brawl back here for P5. Ferrari drag race down the main straightaway. I think Natasha's gonna win that though pretty easily. Denver still has yet to find a way to out-drag Katsuragi at any meaningful way. And Mika has very quickly made that journey to catch the AMG driver. Bit of oversteer from the Shelby. I think she's probably used to that by this point though. Attempts the outside move. Jake, huge curb hop, puts them both way off track. And they both just recover to the apex of the next turn like nothing just happened. What the hell was that? If you look uh, from a chase cam view of Jake Scarborough here, heading up to the high-speed kink. He uh, definitely attacks the ever-loving shit out of that curb. Gets up on two wheels, nearly goes side over or side over side here. Like, this is quite a shot. And at this point, as you're kind of looking at a bit of a diagonal view of the racetrack, you're just a passenger. Forces Mika off into the sand trap. Quite a save from the GT350R racer. Keeps both cars on the racetrack and able to continue as if nothing happened. I'm not really sure how they both managed to keep that those, those cars stable. Finally, Mika gets the move done in a more standard fair manner, heading into the S's. Jake is still there, however, but he didn't get a great exit so I don't think he's going to have a shot at taking the lead away here. No. Holy David Danvers, swear in the name of God, he was tired of sitting behind Katsuragi, and he's like, I'm passing you one way or the other. Not giving Eric any workspace here at all. Apparently Eric doesn't need it, he's going to cut down the inside of the death chicane and defend his position a little bit daringly to say the least. Now if he defends from the 458 into the final turn, it does not matter. Eric breaks very aggressively as the sun is now setting here at Dragon's Trail. Eric not only defends 7th, not only defends 6th place, he takes 5th instead. And Natasha Harris is looking to join her sister and Jake on the podium with a pass on Shoji Hakure. Or just get into the back of him, that also works. I mean, you both get damaged from that, but it's also the final lap, so it's not going to make that much of a difference. Natasha's got it done here. That's a pretty big run out of the S's. She gets just about to the inside, a bit of weight breaking from the F430. Down the inside, curb hop, contact. Awkward a corner exit, but it's enough to get Natasha onto the podium. As we head through the death chicane, I think Shoji would be an idiot to try a pass here. That's a shot. Pulling ahead pretty significantly on just the last lap or so. Mika Harris is going to head out of the last turn and the last kink. She will grab the W at Dragon Trail to cap off. Or no, to begin the first... What? Start off the second half of the championship. Jake Scarborough and her sister Natasha will round out the podium finishers. Oh, we're uh, 
previous points leader has had quite a tumble here as Thrasher manages a mere uh, 14th. Meanwhile, Summers, his closest competition, not doing a whole lot better, but 7th is not 16th, obviously, so... But Eric is also pretty pretty close to them, I believe, and he just scored a P4, so... Let me be looking at a new, um... A new challenger, as it were. And that's basically it. I mean, Mika's now probably a little close-ish, but not much. And with that, let's head into the fifth race. Race 5 is green. We head to the most divisive track on the Challenge Series schedule. High Speed Ring. Yeah, it's a night race, too. Just for added, added danger. A track that some people either love to death because it allows them to really see what their car is capable of on a straight line. Or the other half are just like, please take this track away before it actually kills somebody. We are on board with Jake Scarborough and his AMG. Fresh off a of P2 at Dragon Trail. He's got a bit of work to do if he's going to capitalize on that momentum, though, since he's obviously starting dead last. Like Veronica and uh, Shoji just came together, the two NSX drivers sabotaging each other. Whoops. Round the outside, round the outside. Nearly getting wrecked by Terrence Blackpool on the exit. But he is free to let the uh, engine roar nearly gets smacked into by Thrasher, who nearly got smacked into by Stuber. Gonna be looking at 200 heading into turn one here. Absolutely out of control on the way into turn two. Nearly sending Eric Wojcicki to the Shadow Realm with that breaking point selection. I'm going to come back at him this time with a more legitimate overtake. Still washes up, but I don't think it's going to be enough for Eric to take the spot back. Now, if there's ever a race to prove which car is superior in a straight line out of this championship, it's got to be high-speed ring. With no Monza on the schedule, this is like the best place to be to figure out who has it in the straight, and I'm still pretty set on the idea that it's Paul Valentine, his poor GT engine swap focus. He's about to ratio of Lamborghini Diablo on a straight line. That's the Here Comes Scarborough with equally as death-defying top speed down the inside of Paul Valentine well before we even reach the turn. And he's right up to the back of ice on the exit. Skerber takes the inside of the yeses against the ice. Now it's, a, <clears throat> now it's the outside. Ice slides up the track, almost getting into the AMG, but... They do not collide at all. They're still about as close as two cars can get without hitting each other. The takes on the outside here, and we all know that that is a huge advantage. And with that, Scarborough, not even halfway through the race, is the new race leader. But can he drive away? That is the million dollar question. On a track like this, where Slipstream is obviously going to play a big factor. I think he's already out of slipstream range, so that's not really going to make a difference.
not a ton going on at this moment, I must admit. Except for Summer just screeching ahead of Erica, 200 plus with ease in this Aston Martin. I think she might have the best top speed here. It's hard to say otherwise. Jake is basically out of Brian Ice's sight at the moment. He's, his headlights are but a mere speck in the distance at this point. I'm more concerned about Paul Valentine taking P2 away at this point. As we embark on the final lap here at High Speed Ring. Scarborough with what I can only imagine is like... It's about a three and a half second lead over Brian Ice in the moment. Paul Valentine takes to the inside lane. But gets a bit of oversteer. Ice... Boldly holds the outside, he remains in P2. Then Valentin nearly gets run over by Ice's teammate into turn two. Out of the final corner, it's been a, a crushing victory from Jake Scarborough. He will get a commanding high-speed ring victory here. Brian Ice will take second place just narrowly over Paul Valentine, Natasha Harris, and Stephanie Kaiser, not too far behind in fourth and fifth. So another pretty straightforward race. We had, it seems we got a lot of the drama in in race two. And it's just been kind of sort of business as usual since then. I'm not really complaining for the most part, although something, some upset somewhere would be nice. Like, we used all of the drama at Spa, clearly. But at any rate, it is time to head into the penultimate round here in the Premium Sports Cup. Ahead of the sixth race in the in this episode, in this championship, I should say. I really need to get my terminology straight, man. It's my own terminology, and I can't keep it straight. A uh, quick overview of the points rundown heading into the penultimate round here. It is now a tie for the points lead. Thrasher and June Summers tied at 77. And then not far behind, Eric is at 75. Then Jake Scarborough at 74. Uh, Natasha Harris is fifth in points, only one point ahead of her sister Mika, 67 to Natasha, 66 for Mika. And Brian Ice, and, nope, I'm reading that wrong. Uh, Mika Mizoto and Brian Ice are tied, just behind those two at 64. Billy Stuber is at 58. Narashi at 57. Shoji at 53. Blackpool is at 49. Paul Valentine at 48. Sophia Myers at 47. It's a three-way tie for not last between Veronica, Stephanie, and Garrison at 43. And David Danvers is last at a mere 40. But, well, not quite so, but almost. Um, most of the field mathematically can still win the championship, but I think realistically... Brian Ice is the lowest scoring driver with a chance. 13 off the points lead. A bad race from both Rasher and June Summers can put him in if he wins, and he's not in a bad spot for that starting P3 here. Mika Harris has a chance to crawl her way into the points lead too, since she's starting on pull. Thrasher and Summers are literally pretty much the back row, along with Natasha Harris. So without further ado, let us begin the race. A 
but my battery is running low. Oh no. We're running to turn one here at Tokyo East is a bit of a strange one because it's it's very long. It's very wide too, so it turns into like a mini Talladega a lot. And Kasha was more than prepared for it. She's already up a few places before we even reach the first turn. She's gonna get a few more heading through it, it looks like. She's ahead of... Uh, well, she's ahead of somebody. It's hard to actually tell what the hell's going on, because everyone's just right here. She's up into P10 already, looking for ninth against Sophia Meyer. But on the outside of this corner, it's probably not gonna happen. Because the outside of the McLaren, that'll work up into the top half of the field for the F430 driver. Leaving the two championship leaders pretty far in the dust since they've only passed John Garrison up to this point. The previous race's winner is ahead and Natasha looks to make short work of him. That's the key nearly hits the wall up ahead, but manages to keep her car, you know, not damaged. And then Natasha gets cut off completely by Danvers, and she does not care, she's gonna take P7 away anyway. Uh, we had contact. Veronica with a bit of a clutchy breaking point selection gets into the back of Scarborough. Giving both of them damage. She also has rear damage. I'm not really sure if that was from that corner, though. Regardless, more than a couple of drivers making some pit stops here for the damage they've sustained. Most of the back half of the field is as a matter of... Oh my word. It is the minority of drivers that didn't get damage on that one here. The minority of figures. A pretty solid day for Pacific Spirit, running 1-3-4 one, one, after managing to keep their machinery undamaged to the first lap. This is crucial for them too, because the good runs from all three of them can put all three of them in with a good chance of taking home the championship at the final round. Why did I end that sentence off so weird? Natasha is very quickly catching up to her teammate. Very nearly contact, but still clean. Obviously these two have history, but can they put it aside for just one more day? It seems as though they can. Natasha Harris slides ahead of Miko with... I don't want to say little resistance, but I mean, they didn't make contact, which is a good sign, to say the least. And given their track record when they get near each other on the circuit. Now we're looking at an F430 battle, and by extension, an Italian car battle for the podium positions between Brian Ice, Nico Mizzotto, and Natasha Harris. The latter finding a chance to make a move for P2, and that's as easy as it gets here in the Challenge Series right there. Still a battle for fifth between Natsuki and Danvers. Inside lane for the Viper, I think Danvers has won this battle. You can't quite count the 77B engine out though, so let's see if she can take it back on the front, on the front stretch. Stuber just kind of holding on for dear life and the fact that he didn't take any damage on that one, but his top speed is so severely lacking that he's kind of put himself at a disadvantage just by being on the starting grid here at Tokyo Expressway. And now we're looking at a battle for the win with just under two laps to go between Two teammates, Brian Ice and Natasha Harris. Looks like Natasha's gonna just sweep ahead of Brian. It's like he didn't. It's like he kind of fought that with, uh, with one hand tied behind his back. Like, nah, I don't care. You go ahead. Maybe that was some sort of team orders in play. I know. I don't know how many teams really employ that. I know Black Stallion does not. Also, Mercury didn't either when that was still a thing. I don't know how Pacific Spirit works, though. They seem a little more... Uh, tense. They seem to strike an odd balance between here for fun and 
here for a victory. And the whole team has a bit of an air of superiority, so it's kind of hard to really say one way or the other. Got a bit of a couple of battle going on here. Danvers and Natsuki are still fighting over P5. Looks like Natsuki did get back ahead at some point. Be that on the front stretch or somewhere else, I'm not entirely sure. I kind of... I looked away to watch the battle for the lead. And albeit a bit of a formality, John Garrison and Billy Stuber are fighting for not last out of the undamaged machines. A battle that I think Garrison's probably going to win pretty handily, given that he's got a lot more horsepower in that Corvette. The leaders are pretty spread out for the most part. This is the only real battle on track for a high position. And Danvers sneaks through on the inside, but puts himself in the wall in the process. No damage, other than maybe to his ego. Let's see if Billy Stuber can fight his way back past the Corvette. Meanwhile, in the back, there was some position changing hands. There's a look at the cacophony of cars that took damage during the race, and Veronica's trying to give herself even more damage while she's at it. And I know for a fact that based on her um, her car's in immense straight line performance that that lap one mix-up took very strong cars out of the race in the form of Summers and Thrasher. Summers especially, I think, probably has the best straight line performance in this race. But she wasn't really able to use it for a whole lot because she got bogged down in traffic and is now running in the bottom five. Natasha waves a little to her sister on the opposite side of the expressway, heads towards the tunnel for the final time. Up to the line, Natasha Harris is going to take a stomping victory here at Tokyo Expressway East, an eight minute long race. Our team owner, Brian Ice, will cross in P2, and fellow Ferrari F430, Nico Misoto, claims the final podium spot ahead of Mika Harris. It's a drag race to the line, which Natsuki is going to win to grab P5 at the last moment. And then it's Danvers, Garrison, and Stuber. The winner out of the vehicles that received damage during the race, sort of the consolation award, goes to Jake Scarborough with a mere P9. And that is race six in the books. Time for the finale with a couple of interesting developments which would be pretty obvious the second that the uh, the second the clip fades into existence. So here we go. Look a little unusual. Uh, some kind of weird agreement between the drivers that I wasn't aware of. I guess this is mostly a thing orchestrated by Thrasher. I don't know if it was orchestrated by him, but he was the one that gave it the okay because it seemed like this was something that most of the drivers wanted to see happen. Even the ones you don't see sitting here. Yes, this is an eight-car race. Certainly the lowest we've ever had in the Challenge Series. Up to this point, I think the lowest race car count we've ever had is about 16. We've had multi-class races where there have been 10 in a category, but that hardly counts because it's, you know, there's also an equally sized grid of 10 in the other category. But... This one is interesting because this is the championship decider, and I guess the honors, the you know, the honorable agreement that the other drivers had was, if you don't mathematically have a chance of winning the championship, just 
say, just sit in the garage area and watch the final race. We'll evenly spread out the uh, prize money from 9th down to 18th, so that nobody that didn't race feels gypped, as it were. And let's just watch the, uh, the top 8 in points attempt to win the championship. And oh my god, is it close. As uh, my tablet has a slowpoke moment here. It's an overview of the, uh, the full points conditions going into the final round. Uh, we'll start from the bottom up this time. Last in points is Shoji Hakure at 46. 17th, Veronica at 49. Then it's Stephanie at 52. Valentine at 53. Danvers at 55, Sophia Meyer also at 55, that's a tie for 13th. 12th is John Garrison at 57, Terrence Blackpool at 59, Natsuki at 63, Billy Stuber at 71. Mathematically has a chance, but that would literally require multiple drivers to take last place. So that can't happen, obviously. Actually, no, it would require multiple drivers to take 17th place, which can't happen either. Even if he won. And then we look at the top eight in points. Nico Mizoto, Eric Wyszowski, and June Summers are all tied for P6 at 82 points. And then it's Mika Harris at 83. Jake Scarborough and Thrasher tied for second at 86. And Natasha Harris... It's the points leader at 87. So this starting grid has literally been randomized between those eight drivers. And basically, it's not exactly winner takes all, but it's kind of like that for the most part. But, um... Actually, what was the, uh, what was the agreement back in the notes? Yeah, no, it's a winner-take-all, because that would be unfair to the cars that are in the back of the points. So, like, the ones tied for 82, they wouldn't have a chance, because they can't even... They can hardly make up five points on Natasha if she did finish last. So, a winner-takes-all eight-car race to decide who wins the Premium Sports Cup, as I believe was an idea thrown out by the Pacific Spirit drivers. Mind you, Natasha is the points leader, so she wanted this too, just as much as... You know, as much as the people who were at 82. And was verified by Thrasher because what are me or Nitri going to say about it when, you know, we're in... We're not even in the race. So with all that groundwork laid out, let us get into the final race of episode 56. Brian Ice gets a huge launch off the line. His teammate Mika Harris definitely doesn't. As we head into turn one. As you can see, it's inner Lagos here for the championship finale, just like Formula One would do it, more or less. The vehicle that started last, fittingly, is the current points leader, Natasha Harris, and she's already made her way through most of the field, running P3 already, and we're only through three corners. I wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit of forceful driving here, as this is a championship decider, winner take all. You know, all of the marble style of event. Oh. Alright. What the hell is stuff in there? Well, I did say watch for more forceful driving. I didn't think it would come that quickly, but I shouldn't be surprised considering it's these two. So Mika just put her sister in the wall for second place. Uh, she forced Natasha to put a tire on the grass. And then forced her wide in the middle of turn six, causing her to get into the grass again and hit an outside barrier. That's caused suspension damage to her uh, to her sister's vehicle. 
And of course, Brian Ice was seeing all that in his mirrors and probably shaking his head violently. Maybe. Why does this car not have a rear view mirror in the cockpit? What the fuck? Anyway, that a bit of confusion aside. Natasha into P4 ahead of the other F430 of Mizoto. And now it returns to the, uh, the form of a PSR 123. Natasha's back into third place. And I can only imagine she's not happy with her sister. I I don't even want to think about what's going to happen next. It's not going to be pretty looking. I have this sneaking suspicion. Especially with what was on the line at this race, to be raced like that by her sister. And also to be Natasha in general. She's going to be very mad. And also very off track for good measure. Well, attempted something there, I think. Nika's blocking the inside because she probably knows that if she leaves it open, she's gonna get an F430 to the side panels. The weirdest corner I've ever seen. On one hand, this is exactly what Ice wants to see, because it makes his run to the win even easier if second and place and third place are fighting. But also, it's his cars. And no matter how much money he has, it's still a little bit annoying to cover the, page, to cover the repair bill for both these vehicles. Mika attempts to block her sister, then brake checks her sister. Yeah, Natasha's had more than fucked enough. I think that just DNF'd her sister for good measure. It looks like she couldn't go anywhere there. Might have broken some, uh... Some important... Maybe the left rear suspension is broken by, the, by some chance? Oh, yeah. Left rear suspension... A lot of smoke to that GT 350R is out of the race. Nothing terminal to the vehicle that can be salvaged in the garage later, but uh, it's not going anywhere fast now, and it's going to be a very angry sister when this race is over. June Summers is making her way through the field. She's just passed Kloschowski for P4 in the meantime. It's hard to just to look away from this Pacific Spirit thing, as I think the team is pretty much collapsing before our very eyes. There are, in fact, five other cars still in the race that are not on that team. And thus, we are about to arrive at the final lap here in the Premium Sports Cup. Could have been a fifth lap if we'd started the race a little earlier on, but all the time it took to get this this weird winner-takes-all thing set up and made official, we uh, basically started at sundown. The, um, the truck lighting isn't great here. As you can see, not a lot of, not a lot of external lighting. 
Mika Harris seems to have limped her car into the pit lane. Despite all the rear suspension, so it wasn't engine damage, or at least not a blown engine, but it can't be in good shape anyway. And now it's a battle between Natasha and Brian. Brian has just seen what Natasha did to her sister. See how he reacts to that. Is he just letting her go? No, all right. Finish her. Oh my God. I, uh, as we can hear the distant angered honking noises, I think their alliance might be at an end. I don't know about you folks. That seems like a pretty harsh message to send to a teammate when you're battling for the championship. Yeah, it just, uh, gives her the boot into turn six. And chase Cam one more view of this crash. Once again caught the grass and then suddenly had more grip when she caught not grass. Anger honk all you want. Your race is over, Natasha, and so is your championship. Your teammate has just ripped that right from your clutches. I would tend to say. So, uh, yeah, if we're going off of the unofficial rules, your champion is Brian Ice. Even if we weren't going to go off of the, um, Winner takes all method of deciding who the champion will be. It wouldn't matter, because Brian Ice would also still win the points battle anyway with that win. <clears throat> the results look even more confounding now than they did before. Your champion, Brian Ice, at 103 points, followed by Thrasher at 102 points, Natasha Harris and Jake Scarborough tied at 101 points, Along with, actually, no, Nico Mizoto, Jake Scarborough, and Natasha Harris tied for third at 101 points. June Summers at 100, Eric Wojcicki at 99, and Mika Harris at 96. So, either way you spin it, Brian Ice is your Premium Sports Cup champion. By a singular point. <laughs> this has been quite a thrill ride, to say the least. We've had, uh, well, repairable DNF, or like repairable damages to the, uh, to the GT350R of Mika Harris and to her sister's F430. But I feel like the damage done hasn't been to the cars, it's probably been to the drivers and their relationships with one another. Let's just say... I don't think Brian Ice is going to be the one fixing that F430 tomorrow. Pretty sure it's going to be Natasha. I think she's got the money for that. And uh, that wraps up episode 56. And until next time, goodbye.